Klaus to the Lord. Let's bless each other. May be peace in your heart. You're the missionary that will save all the nations. Let's restore the 10,000 believers with the firstborn blessing in this age of 2013. Thank you for this blessing. We are people of the covenant. And that's why we need to concentrate on this covenant of God. That's why God has tell us we must concentrate in this covenant. And that's the title of today. And we want to share this message to you. Many theologians say that Deuteronomy, in this book, it's about the obedience uh, towards God. And many people of these theologians says this. That's why last week we saw this. When we obey the blessings uh, in the Word of God, then we are blessed. We can see that. But in reality, of course it's for obedience, this book. But us, how much we can be obey the Word of God, right? With our strength, we cannot obey all the Word of God, right? That's why we must put all in in the covenant of God. We must concentrate in the covenant of God. Why the covenant of God then? Why do we need to concentrate on it? First of all, because through Jesus Christ, He has saved us, and we are saved, we have received the blessings, and also through the Word, we can enjoy the abundance of God's Word, and also within that blessing, and we can receive strength, and also we can have the blessings to enjoy, to save the all nations. That's why we must concentrate in the covenant of God. John 10.10 10 says, Because I have come here to give life, but in abundance I have come. It doesn't finish with just having salvation through Jesus Christ, but we that are saved, we must enjoy and have the abundance within the life, within the His Word, and enjoying this, and through that, we can save the world, and we will have victory through that. That's why today and this month, when we give worship, don't think it's just a worship we give every week, but today, what's the message in Christ God has given us, and we need to enjoy this abundantly. And think if it's like your first worship today. And I hope that today, we restore these blessings today. Why do we need to concentrate in God's covenant? God has put us in this world, but he, he wants to raise us as blessings for this earth. We might not know, but there's two things. Some, one thing is in front of God and with the covenant of God, we are blessings with this, within this world, or we are in front of this world as disaster or failure. Are we living this way or the other way? Two things we see here. The promise of God with His, with His, His Word, when we concentrate in His covenant, then the blessings of God comes upon us and it means that He will use us as blessing. And this we see in Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 to 14. The covenant of God, when we concentrate in the covenant of God, and if we are not concentrating in the covenant of God, what happens? We will be a life that has failure. That's why when we live in this earth, we must see what happens when we're not concentrating in the covenant of God. We must be that model to show that what happens when we're not concentrating in the covenant. What side do you want to stand for? 
Maybe we don't say a lot of things, but we want to and we desire to be at that side of the blessings, right? But when we look at the, at the Word of God today, Deuteronomy 28, and when we hear this, everybody loves to hear Deuteronomy 28. But if you look at 15 to 28, when you look at it, it talks about uh, curses, when, what happens when you lose hold of the covenant. And this we can see in Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15 ahead. We hold on to the word, we hold on to the covenant, but we don't think about much about these curses we, when we lose hold of the covenant. In other words, we don't think a lot about the failures that happens when we lose hold of the covenant. But why, in such extent, what, why it talks to us that failure comes when you're not know, considering the covenant? It's because many people are walking at that path of failure. Same thing for us. Even though we have the walk of faith, if we let go the most important thing the covenant of God and not put all in the covenant and not concentrate in the covenant of God we also even though we have the walk of faith we can also have failure today everybody that are here today listening hold it, I hope that you hold on to the covenant concentrate in the covenant and all the members may be the models of blessings when the word of God is imprinted in us, then the word <laughs> revives me as His Spirit is within it. When we are imprinted in the word and we are rooted down in the word, we say that, right? But in being imprinted in the word means is, of course, if it's, we can say is living according to the word. It means that the word that is in me, the spirit, it revives my spirit, first of all. That's why every day we listen to the word and also we put all in in this word. And when we imprint it and then wrote it down, and then, and, and then the failures, crises, and problems are solved. I hope that every time you put the all in the covenant, and all the covenant that you're related, the fields that you're related, I hope that through this, maybe the kingdom of God be established in that field. So first point. To order to, in order to concentrate on the word of God, the word of God, which is the covenant, we must, it's, we must see it as it is established, the kingdom of God within this history of this world. And it is being established, it is being fulfilled. That's why Ecclesiastes 3.15 It says something very important for us. It's not something that happened like coincidentally, but actually happened because it was supposed to happen. It says this which is already has been taken has been that is which is to be already has been and God seeks that has been driven away. Everything that is happening now here is not by coincidence. It's actually, it's being promised and it's being said through His Word. Even the things that happen in this history of the world, we see as the things of this world, but that's not true. But it's everything happened within the promise of the Word of God. <coughs> That's why it says that that which has already been has already been that is which that which is to be already has been and God says that has been driven away. If you see Second Corinthians chapter five, there's nothing new under the sun. In other words, everything is told and everything is said in the word. And all those who put all in in the covenant, 
And all those who were all in the Word, and those who were concentrated in the Word, they were the ones that enjoyed the blessings to save the, the world. Because the things that happen in this world is not just happening, but it actually everything is happening according to the Word. Last week I told you, in the covenant of God, there's an answer of our life. Inside the covenant of God, there's all the direction we need to go. That's why when you hold on to the covenant of God, there's nothing else to do much more because it's the word that, God, that is being established in my life. If you look at the book of Judges, and what is the characteristic of the books of Judges? We can see that spiritually it could be like a big confusion, but of course, 14 judges were raised and split, and it was like a spiritual confusion. We can see that in that way. But if you see it in another way, there's a blessing telling us within that age in the judges. In other words, if you look at the book of Judges 21, and if you look at the core word, if you can say in the book of Judges, is 21, 25. Judges chapter 21, verse 25. It's in those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did was what was right in his own eyes. So they did everything what was right in his own eye. Because there were no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eye. What does actually mean? We will look at it later. This is those day, in those days, there was no king in Israel. It's not that there was no king. There was not a human king, but there was God who was the king of everyone. In other words, what was the time that they could enjoy the big blessing was in this time because he, God himself directly would give the word, bless the people and give the guidance. And we can see that, that when God became the king, Israel was being conquered and by guided by God, by God Himself. And it says that people did whatever they wanted to do before because there was no king. Because they decided to listen to what the people wanted. And also, we need to let down those human kings that we think that that can rule over us, and we reject the king, the God King, our God as a king. That's why they raise who Saul King, King Saul. And the time they could enjoy the greatest blessings was the time of judges, actually. But they rejected the true king, and from that, King Saul was raised. And you know what happened to King Saul. He disobeyed the word of God and he went to failure. The second king raised, who was it? That was David. But David loved God. And what was the evidence that David loved God? He always held on to the covenant. And he always centered on the covenant, he, lived, he lived his life. And that works that we can see, we can look at the books of Psalms. Half of the Psalms was written by David. And to what point he received grace and the love of God, not that he lived correctly in front of God, he loved the word of God, he loved God, he, we can see that. And we can see in Psalms, the most longest Psalms is Psalms 119. How much he experienced the grace of God. And we can see that at Psalms 119. 
So King David, in his time, he, he loved God more. And he saw what happened when the Ark of the Covenant came by. He danced with joy. He said he was much better to be next to the Ark of the Covenant than being in the palace. He much loved the Word of God. He says more the tabernacle was much, much important. And we can see that he put all in the Word. And the conclusion, when David was king, became the most uh, strongest nation that time. Israel still uh, have the flag of the David's star, right? So that's a blessing of David who put all in in the word and the covenant. And the three, third king that was raised was King Solomon. We see that when he was young, he became the king and he obeyed the word of God. And also God gave so much wisdom to him. To what point? Even to all the kings around the nation of Israel to listen to him, they would make a line to listen about Solomon. And even they put and they gave everything that they had to see Solomon. But why? But Solomon had the word. But at the end of the day, Solomon, because he received so much physical things, he has forgotten the spiritual things. And at the end, you know what happened to Solomon, right? You know that he had accepted all the gods of the Gentiles to come in. That's why Israel has become a nation of idolatry. Then after Solomon, when God has given the greatest wisdom and also the greatest nation, two nations were separated, divided in that time, and became a king that has gone to, through failure. If you see Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, 24, you can see the greatest blessings. And if you look at the 28, verse 15 to 18, we see the curses when you're not put it all in in the covenant. And that's written in detail. Why is it written so in detail? Because we only want to receive the blessings and just pass over the curses, right? But if you put all in the covenant, you will receive the greatest and true blessing, not, not be alive that has failure, but receive the greatest blessings within the word and become the model and become the witnesses and be raised as witnesses. And that's what we can see in the word of God today. And what is the conclusion of this covenant of this word? We must concentrate on the word, of course, and we must have the word imprinted in us, and also that word will revive me. And when we concentrate on the word and the covenant, what happens? We'll become a witness. Then. God said you will be witnesses not that you will have you will become a witness he said you will be a witness in other words the life that you have which is once you will have the blessings and the witnesses and it will be, you will be one you will be one you will be the person that God will be responsible of your life and we can see that you will revive and you will save others and not just living a life as, as what is given but completely and also perfectly you will be discovered that you are in the covenant journey it doesn't matter what happened you know what God really needs because within that covenant God is using me within that covenant and it doesn't matter what problem you face then what is the conclusion of this covenant? You say you need to concentrate and put all into the covenant, but what's the conclusion of this covenant? Three things. In the, in the Old Testament, all the word of God is being fulfilled right now. First of all, the first thing that we must not lose hold of in the way that we are living, the, the beginning of everything is what? 
It's the covenant of Mount Calvary. If you cannot hold on to the Mount Calvary covenant, if you cannot believe in it, your life hasn't started yet. What is the covenant of Mount Calvary? Us that we were in sin and death, we should have died. That's the law, right? But Jesus came as the Christ in this earth. He died on the cross for me. And He has finished it all. John 19.30, right? I should have been crucified. I should have died for my own curses and death. But Christ finished it all for me. And He said, finished it, it, finished, it is finished. And he, that was fulfilled in the Mount of Calvary. Completely, the problems that you have in Christ, everything has finished. That's the beginning of our life. If you don't know this, if you cannot believe this, then I can tell you, your life hasn't started yet. Surely, the Lord it says, it is finished. This is something tremendous. It's something that we cannot imagine. Something that all humanity, neither one humanity can start solve the problem of sin and disaster, but He has solved it for us. But not end, just didn't end. But Matthew chapter 28, 18, 20, He said He will be with us forever until the ends of this earth. He had finished it all. He is with us today, now, with us. And then he says, Go and make disciples of all nations, and you will be witnesses of the earth. Go to all nations. What does that mean? Christ will have finished all the problems of life. Until now, he is fulfilling the works of 237 nations. Then, the problems that we have right now is not the problem actually. Is the new beginning. He has finished it all, right? He says you will be, he'll be with us until the end of the earth. If you believe in this truly, then the problems that you have, the difficulties, events, you might think is the problem, but actually it's the new beginning. You must hold on to this covenant. Um, let's repeat. Me, there's no problem. That's the covenant of the Mount of Calvary. That's the beginning of your life. And with this Mount of Calvary, the disciples, they were gathered in the Mount of Olives. And this, this is the covenant of Mount of Olives. And those who had the covenant of the Mount of Olives, for 40 days, they were concentrated. And they put all in the covenant of God. And what is this covenant that they heard in Mount of Olives? Christ has, has resurrected, right? And we can see he talks about Christ. And also, he, talks, he talked about 40 days according and about the kingdom of God. And he says, wait for the promise. In a couple of days, the work of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That's why Acts 1 8, you'll be my witness when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit in Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, until the ends of the earth. Christ, kingdom of God, only, king, only filling of the Holy Spirit. The last week I told you, the conclusion of our life is Christ, kingdom of God, only Holy Spirit. This is the conclusion for all humanity and, and for everything. Only Christ, only Holy Spirit, only kingdom of God. That's why everything is within the three things. The mystery of God, triune God also is in this. And we don't know and we don't actually realize this, right? That's why we must put all in the covenant. We have received every blessing already. Within that throne, God knows my weakness. And God has promised us the filling of the Holy Spirit for this reason. And this is the blessing of Mount Olive, right? And the church, every church held on to this and they were not shaken. Why? 
because Christ, who is the answer for all, with Christ, only kingdom of God, only filling of the Holy Spirit, they were witness of it. Even persecution, tribulations, they were not shaken. Especially through Christ. We know the blessings of the kingdom of God that will be established, and we must experience this, and we must concentrate on this. If you look at Acts chapter 19, 8-10, Paul, for three months, spoke boldly about the kingdom of God. What's the conclusion of, of that? It says, the The evil spirits were broken down. If you look at verse 8 to 10, it spoke about, he spoke about uh, the kingdom of God and those who received it, he shared this to other people and said this for two years and all who resided in Asia heard the word of the Lord. And the, the, and the old... The, Evil spirit in Ephesus was broken down. Because in the Mount of Olives, Jesus has confirmed to the disciples what would happen. And so what situation, what feel, when the kingdom of God is established, then we can see the, king, the kingdom of Satan being broken down. And this is what, we, what happened when we experience the Mount of Olives of this covenant. With the covenant of Mount Calvary, covenant of Mount Olives. It's so only Christ, only kingdom of God, and only the Holy Spirit. And this came upon the marks of Peru, the works of only the Holy Spirit. That's why the marks of Peru, what is the works of the Holy Spirit within that? This is also talking about the Passover, the ingathering, and also. The in pen, day the Pentecost, these three feasts were included. And this happened in the pulpit, in the messages, in the field. The remnants will be raised and they will be revived. And this happened in the Mark's upper room. They were lifted up as witnesses. The pulpit message was revived and they were raised as disciples and they were commissioned. And that was in Mark's upper room. That's what put all in the covenant. Concentrate in the covenant. This, in other words, the true beginning of your life is holding on to the Mount of Calvary covenant. Till now, only Christ, only kingdom of God, only the filling of the Holy Spirit is being established, right? Until now. It is being established until now in our field, in our life too. But through the Holy Spirit, it's not just that you will be a witness, it's that you will. You will. Uh, you are the witness. And the day of the Pentecost, though God opened the doors, the important doors to those who had the mission within this. You must concentrate in this covenant. All the things in the Old Testament were included for this And is included in these three things. What is the covenant of the Mount of Calvary? If you don't know this, you don't know what's true life or true living. You don't know what's happening in the world. You don't know what's the word at the end of the day. And you will be in disorder and also emptiness. But today, in this time, put all in in the covenant of the Mount Calvary. And you must confirm the covenant of Mount Olive. And with that grace, go to the Mark's upper room. And then in that moment, something will happen that you will not even imagine. God will open all the doors. There's one thing we should do only. It's not about, I'm going to obey, I'm going to obey. It's about, if you concentrate the covenant, you put, put all in the covenant, God Himself will work for you. In the time, in the perfect time, God will work. Second, time, second point. The results of losing, of leaving behind the covenant, what happens? Being inside the covenant, it means that you have received all the blessings. But what happens 
What is the result of someone that leaves behind the covenant? And this is the verse 15 to verse 20. The curse that they have forgotten the word of God. They have forgotten the word of God. And you forget the word of God, the first thing that comes out is disasters. It's in the verse 15. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, or be careful to do all His commandments and His statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. He said, but if you will not obey, if you will not obey, it, means right, it says right there, right? It says, if you forget, it says then all the curses shall come upon you and overtake you <laughs> of course if you are believers you must concentrate on the word of God right but if you forget to obey you will suffer and you you will be in curses it's, it's obvious but the, if you look at it another way if you want to concentrate in the co covenant you will receive all the blessings and all, not only the, all, all the blessings but unique blessings in your life. But look at the verse 16. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed shall you be in the field. It's not about what's the best city, what's the best field, what's the good things. No. And so cursed shall be in the city and cursed shall you be in the field. It doesn't mean that wherever you where you go will be better seated, things like that. It's that wherever you go without the word is the curse. So what is the condition to be blessed? In reality, is God with us. That's the condition of being blessed. And that's the blessing also for the field. Joseph he went to a slave to this great nation and he was a slave but it doesn't matter if he was a slave he, the blessing of God come upon him and even to the worst field he could be he turned it to be the greatest blessing is Genesis 39 2 the Lord of God was together with Joseph and he was a prosperous man we say that our situation must be better to receive the blessing right and it says that we must have a good background or something like that right but but the worst at the worst condition the worst situation that can change anything and the mystery is within us already what's that we see that Joseph, God was with Joseph and he became a prosperous man. Being slave, it means that you don't, you don't have anything. You cannot have anything. But he says he will be with you. Sometimes we feel bad looking at us that we don't I have nothing. I have not learned no, it doesn't matter. God is with you. You all have the prosperity that the people would not understand. Even though you're in a bad situation, a bad environment, it will be changed because of you. That's why Joseph, God was with him. And the mystery to change all these things is God with you. That's the only thing that can change everything that you are right now related. At the end of the day, in this field, they will. If you cannot do this, they will fall into the darkness. What happens is if we leave behind the word of God, we forget the grace that are inside this salvation. But those who are saved, what's the worst thing that can happen to us? What's the worst thing that can happen to someone who is saved? is forgetting the grace that Jesus Christ has done for us in that cross. That's the worst thing we can do as a safe, as a safe person. Because in our walk of faith, we, we think that we must live right or 
correctly. Of course, your life and the style that you must have is must be upright. You know, so you must do a lot of things. But before that, the most important thing in your walk of faith is not forgetting the grace that God did for us to save us. You should not forget that. It's not forget. It's not uh, forgetting the grace. In other words, the contrary thing is you see, because of Christ, you have been saved all the sa- all the disaster, all the curse of Satan. But you forget this is it's the worst thing you can do. If you look at Psalms 50:22, you that have forgotten God, it says, "Mark this time, who you forget God, lest a tear you a tear your part, and there will be none to deliver. There will be none to." To, to de- deliver. If you forget about God, you need to try to get responsible of your own life and at the end of the door, and you'll be falling into Genesis 3, 6, 11. Forgetting who is God, in other words, forgetting who has saved you, the grace. Then you are meant to live Center on yourself. God Himself says, I will be responsible. Yeah, but I say, No, God, I will be responsible my life in this part. That's why every day, enjoy the blessings of this grace. Don't forget the salvation you will receive. And you forget and you live with this, but God will leave you just like that? No. The problem is the, the, the curses that come from that. Let's say that you, maybe you do that, you forget the word, and maybe your life is getting better. But that's not true. That's not getting better. Actually, God is in control of everything. But you forget that and you live by your own way. And what happens? You say, oh, I don't need God. You say that sometimes, right? Because you see the results. But at the end of the day, everything will be exploded. And then it will be like curses. That's what Romans chapter 124 says. Therefore, God gave them up in the loss of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. And verse 21 says, For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. But you must have thanksgiving to Him because you honor Him because He has saved you. And the, the curse of all curses is not being able to know this. It says, claiming to be wise, they became fools. If you're children of God, of course, God will guide you, of course, right? And you must enjoy that. And continuously we see here, there's a suffering that man cannot uh, cannot overcome. Romans one twenty one and Romans one twenty two. Claiming to be wise, if we became fools, and verse twenty three, and exchanged the glory of the modern God for images resembling more to man's and birds and animal creeping things, and also in Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight, verse twenty five two. This is the reason why we should not uh, leave behind the Word of God. Not only that, because if you leave behind the covenant, even though you have victory in something that you have done, you, it will take you to disaster and failure. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. For us, the power is Christ only. If you look at the word of God today, if you leave behind the covenant of God, what happens? Verse 23, this is the verse 24 is that from heaven does shall come down unto you are destroyed verse 25 it says the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies 
This is the conclusion and result of leaving behind the covenant. And says that you be the not the hand, you be the the tail. He says, and not being able to give, but you be able, you need to borrow from them now. In other words, you be shamed from this world. Look at the verse forty-five, Deuteronomy twenty-eight. All these curses shall come upon you, and pursue you, and overtake you till you are destroyed, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep His commandments and His statutes that He commanded you. And verse forty-six says, "They shall be a sign and wonder against you and your offspring forever." At this time, if you hold on to the covenant, it's not that you will be saved, but all your generations too. If you hold on, if you leave behind the covenant, not only you will perish, but also your generations will perish. And this is the reality that we can see in this word. It says, verse. It says, verse forty-six: They shall be a sign and a wonder against you and your offspring forever. Don't just come to church without nothing, like thinking of nothing. There's a lot of people that just come to church without any thoughts, any things, right? Don't don't think like that. But actually, you have the results of what's the true blessings, right? If you're gonna bring failure, or or you're gonna hold on to the covenant right now, we can bring the results of the blessings, or we can bring results of failure. But but that is what you hold on today. That's the results. If you hold on to the covenant correctly, then what happens? You know what is going to happen, right? But if you let the ho- hold off the covenant, you will be slaves and be shamed, right? Because of Joseph, Israel has come in, into Egypt, right? About seventy families, seventy families. At the end of time, Israel and Egypt. Were ruled by Israel, in other, in other words. But they let hold of the covenant, even though there were more than two hundred thousand, seventy and two hundred thousand. There was a lot of big difference of numbers, but two hundred thousand people that let off hold of the covenant, they became slave, and they were became、uh, slave to this world. Look at verse forty three. Let's look at forty-three.、It、says the sojourner who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. This is this is a word that is very important.、It、says among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. In other words, you'll be slave to this world if you let off the covenant, and this is still happening right now. This is still happening. Only the gospel, only the covenant, can raise us. With other things, of course, you can have something and you can have some time of success, but this will make you lesser and lesser. You be slave to this earth, doing the things of this world. It means that you be doing the things that Satan wants, the errors that Satan wants. Only the gospel, only the covenant, will give you the power to conquer and also to rule over this earth. That's why don't hold on to other things. 
only concentrate in the covenant. And I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's conclude the word. If you put all in, in the word of the covenant and you believe, and then it will become your blessing. God told Adam and Eve, don't eat from this fruit of evil and good. Then you must actually concentrate in this word of the covenant, right? But because of my desire, I ate from this tree. Then the result was the failure that came upon that. Are you going to have the results of the blessings or are you going to have the results of destruction? From now on, you, are you concentrated in the covenant? Or are you not being able to concentrate in the covenant? Then everything will be as it is. The covenant of the Mount Calvary, covenant of Mount Olive, and ca covenant of the Marks of Peru. It's included all the blessings in the covenant to save the world. I hope that you concentrate in the covenant in this corona, in this pandemic. God is giving you this time so you can concentrate only in this covenant. If it's not this, just be able to concentrate in the covenant, right? God has put us this situation. Many people can say it's too difficult. The news is so... Uh, put us so much in anxiety and all that. But the reason why God has allowed this kind of situation is because He wants us to concentrate in the covenant only. That's why a little bit, every day, you have that time to concentrate in the covenant. Just five minutes. Not many times, just five minutes. Then that will become your rhythm. Five minutes a day will become your rhythm. And then something starts to put a system. This is spiritual system, your, your thoughts, your heart, everything starts to establish a system. And from that, 24 hours come upon. If it's 24 hours, hours, then what it comes from that is 25 hours and the blessing of the covenant of the summit of 25 hours. That's why every day in your life, five minutes only, put all in the covenant. And then you will see what God has given to us. That will become your system, and there will be your 24 hours, and from there the 25 hours, and the kingdom of God, and then we'll be raised as a summit. And I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. God, even though we see this earth, we know that only the covenant must prevail in us. Let us concentrate and let us put all in this covenant and let us save this earth as the witnesses. And let us be the members of believers that have that works in our life. The covenant of the Mount of Olives, we can hold on to it as reality. And also, the covenant of Mount Calvary also let it be for us every day in our, in our fields too. And the covenant of Marks of Peru and the field and the pulpit message and the future and the next generation, this blessing must be relayed as the witnesses.